the meeting is actually uh, those who we invited uh, uh, from programs who are undergoing their curriculum review uh, this semester. Uh, and uh, those are the, the, um, the invited uh, um, participants. And we also open the program to uh, all the faculty members that, that we have. So you might find that you are part of the group that is going to do your curriculum review and also uh, other lecturers who may want to know what is it, uh, what is the uh, PPG, what we call Pembelajaran Terang Dunia Tian that we are embarking on uh, starting uh, this semester. Okay, so let me uh, start the um, the program uh, proper. So we are here to um, look at uh, the uh, latest um, move in higher education uh, in Malaysia. Um, when, I was, when I say latest, it's, it's not really um, new because some universities have st uh, started the uh, PTG, going on PTG earlier since 2019 or 2020 but as um uh, community we propose that we start the uh, ptg uh, from uh, now on okay so uh, ptg of pembelajaran terhadap gantian is actually uh, an upgrade from our whole blended learning uh, that we did uh, since 2012. So um, this PTG of Planja Tradun Gantian is actually part of the uh, PPMPT uh, 2015-2025 uh, and it is part of uh, actually number nine um, where we have uh, online uh, global online learning and this is one of the targets that the um, university need to achieve based on the national target for PPP and PT. So let's look at uh, what was blended learning uh, that we had in WN4. So uh, the GPT or Jabatan Pengajian Tinggi had actually published a book called Garis Panduan Pembelajar Pelaksanaan Pembelajaran Terhadap Dengan Tian um, in 2019 and we had started to move with the adoption of uh, PTG which is slightly different uh, in the uh, operations uh, the, uh, from our whole blended learning that we had in Spectrum. So if you remember from 2012 we had uh, the blended learning KPI in our in our spectrum, where you need to make sure that your spectrum achieve uh, several uh, numbers uh, that was prescribed. So, uh, in accordance to the development of blended learning, we now wish to move on to the. Uh, PTG or Pembelajaran Terhadap Gantian. In English, it's called uh, Blended Learning Institution. So and that's different than our old blended learning. Okay. So we actually submitted this to JKIK. We have um, also been reminded by the uh, ministry that we have not um, started our PTG yet. And we started to arrange for PTG to be included in the uh, dasar pengajar dasar pengajaran ijazah tinggi dan dasar pengajaran ijazah dasar. So uh, that has been done in 2022, and this has actually been endorsed by the uh, Senate uh, a few months back. So let's look recap what what is the uh, definition for blended learning or pembelajaran teradun? So uh, in Malaysia, we take the uh, definition 
for blended learning by uh, Ellen and Seaman uh, from the um, Sloan Consortium. And uh, our blended learning is actually where uh, the courses are being uh, delivered as part face-to-face -face and also part uh, online, uh, part as, uh, partly as uh, e-learning. So um, the uh, the percentage that we are aiming is just, uh, between 30 to 79 percent. So above 79 percent, where um, it becomes um, an ODS. So we don't want to go into that. So I would suggest that faculties uh, uh, don't uh, exceed the 79 percent of uh, blended learning, because then you need to actually look at a different um, qualifications or uh, a different uh, framework, which is an ODL framework, it has its own COPA um, uh, code of practice, which uh, we, some of the faculties are now devising a few programs, a few programs too, um, to go into an ODL mode. Okay, so, uh, so this was uh, our own blended learning. So from 2012 to 2021, uh, the blended learning that we did was actually a complementary for Bajara Teradun Sokongan. That means we deliver our course 14 weeks face to face like normal, but we supplement our teaching with online components and also online uh, learning or e learning uh, components that supplements the face to face teaching. It is done at the cost level only, so that means you are free to design and develop the online components or the electronic components supplementary within your own cost. So that means uh, it's not subject to oversight by the program. When we move into our TTG or blended learning by substitution. The difference is now you can actually replace the learning, which is done face to face, to an online component. So that means you can actually skip or uh, design uh, a one week, uh, two weeks, or three weeks, depending on how much you want the students to undergo self-learning online within your uh, LMS or any other online components that you might you might have. So that means, for example, you switch uh, week three and week four to an online component. Uh, for example, you use a MOOC course that is done by the students independently as part of the whole 14 weeks program. So that's what EPG is about. And because it is designed in such a way that it replaces lecture, face-to-face -face lecture, uh, the, the, the delivery is done at the, the program level and also at the cost level. So we will see differences in terms of your online delivery is actually part of the curriculum. So that's the the advancement, I would say, from uh, Pembelajaran Teradun Sokongan or PTS to a PTG. And uh, the last point here, it, it replaces the face-to-face -face, uh, lecture. Okay, But there is a, a right way to do that. And we are going to explore that uh, later. Okay, so... Um, So uh, basically, I'm uh, just um, reiterating that uh, when we move uh, into the uh, PTG or uh, blended learning by substitution, we are moving the uh, KPI for e-learning to the program level because we design uh, the PTG at that level. So that means there's no more the 
the KPI for individual lectures or individual courses to do online learning or to do a blended learning um, because it will be at the program mm -hmm. level. So when mm -hmm. we change or when we get in the replacing the when we are replacing uh, the lecture component, we replace the, we are designing a new learning experience for our uh, students. So, and uh, for this, we still would like you to use Spectrum so that uh, that becomes a one-stop center for the students, either to become the home of the online learning component, or it becomes a indexing center, so a one-stop center, before you point the students into different platforms that will deliver the online component that you are uh, going to replace your lecture uh, for. Okay. So that means uh, the students can access uh, the learning, uh, the activities, and also the assessment through uh, Spectrum, but it might take the students into different uh, platforms. Okay, so this is the operation de definition for PTG uh, that was uh, done by the, minis the, the ministry. So it says that um, the, the formula for uh, PTG would be to empower the online learning in a, in a structure uh, of 40, 40, 20. That means 40 bahan pembelajaran or learning um, resources, 40 is the learning activity and 20 is the uh, assessment. And the 40, 40 40 for 20 formula is based on the total learning time, the SLT for the students. We will uh, look at how this is done in the uh, later slides. So um, if we look at the old way of doing our uh, online learning or blended learning, uh, where we put the calculation for the blended learning without looking at the uh, relationship with the uh, number of uh, credit hours in the course. So that means uh, for a two credit hour course, uh, even three or even four or even five credit hour course, the number of the calculation is still, the number of the activities that we need to do to achieve the e-learning KPI is still the same. One uh, core information, seven uh, learning resources, three activities, and two uh, resources. And so, any if we achieve that, even though our cost is two credits, even though our cost is five credits, it's still the same. So, it does not look at the relationship between that and the uh, hours, uh, credit hours, because it's going to be different, isn't it? So, um, the, the formula is there to make sure that there is a direct correlation between uh, the credit hours with the online learning element that we designed for uh, a single course and also to a larger extent, a single program. So uh, this example that we have here, we have a three credit course, 130, hour, 130 hours. If we choose to have the PTG of 36 hours, uh, the PTG of 30%, that means it will be 36 hours of learning online for a three, three credit. And you compare that if you have four credit course, it's going to be 48 hours for uh, 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 four, four credit with 30% PTG. So the, the difference is where you have the, you take into account the credit hours that the students will uh, undergo in the learning, in their learning. Okay, so this is uh, uh, 
quite uh, straightforward so far. Okay, so when you are designing the learning hours for the SLP, it will actually reflect in the uh, curriculum. So that's why we say when we move into PTG, you will actually uh, put the calculation in the SLP and also in, in the program. You are going to actually influence the program or the study program that the students would uh, undergo during their uh, curriculum cycle. So uh, when you look at the uh, formula again, uh, uh, 40 for resources. So the real resources can be uh, a unit or a topic uh, or a chapter, uh, and it can come in different forms, uh, th things like video, things like audio, infographics. You can, and then that's for resources. And if we look at the three credit course, 36 hour, 30% uh, PTG, you actually divide that, divide that into 40, 40, 20. That means 14 hours, 14 hours. And then the assessment, uh, which is 20, is 8 hours. It can be uh, on a different activities or different uh, types of uh, assignment thing, like things like quiz, turn in assignment or any other um, activity that forms as assessment and it doesn't have it doesn't have to be a mark assessment it can be a scaffolding assessment that you do with the students so that then they can move uh, move on or they can complete the main assignment later on okay so uh, when we have the 40 40 20 then you would uh, be wondering what are the items that we can uh, put to calculate the uh, three different elements, which is the resources, the activities, and also the assessment. So for uh, learning resources, it can be a MOOC or micro credentials. It can be an animation or any Web 2.0 tools. It can be a simulation. Uh, and if the list is there, you can also even have um, a video recording. It can be a lecture either inside and outside the class, but it comes with a caveat. Uh, let's put it this way. If you are doing uh, the, if you, if you are going to uh, replace the lecture with a lecture uh, within uh, an online lecture, it needs to be meaningful for the students. So what, what I mean by, meant by meaningful is if you have a guest lecturer that is from a different university, for example, so uh, we have uh, students or we have a, a, a guest lecturer from Stanford University, for example, then and the, the Stanford University lecturer is going to have an online session, a live online session with our students, then yes, it is uh, it is going to be uh, logical that you have this uh, online uh, lecture with that person. But if you are going to replace your live lecture in the classroom with uh, an online lecture with, uh, with the students while you are in UM, and your students in UM, you might as well actually uh, meet the students in your uh, lecture halls like normal. But if you are, for example, uh, away in uh, Vancouver, for example, for conference, and you 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 want to make sure you want to still have a class, then yes, uh, you can have an online lecture uh, as uh, a learning resources for the students. Okay, so you need to look at the situation. It is a uh, practical, when it is practical because of uh, issues of logistics, for example, like uh, our Stanford lecturer just now, 
yes, it would uh, be uh, prudent for you to have that uh, online lecture uh, with the students, with the guest lecturer. So uh, that is the uh, learning resources for uh, uh, the delivery of uh, PTG. And then we also have the learning activities that the students do. So the difference between resources and activities is that the activities are activities that the students interact with. That's different than the learning resources where those are the things that the students consume within the activity time or within the, uh, the, the lecture time. So cons consumption is one thing and then uh, interaction is another and that is where we call activity uh, activity pembelajaran where you can have things like padlet or h5p that we have in our spectrum uh, interactive simulations that you might find there are different resources for interact simulations i will um, uh, go into that a little bit later web 2.0 applications that normally will have activities in them uh, things like Kahoot, I know everybody, uh, almost everybody here knows uh, what, what Kahoot. Uh, online tutorial, so for example, again, you have uh, guests, uh, academic from different university who's doing tutorial online, you can join that. You can even have a joint online tutorial with different universities, for example, in the live session. So those are the kinds of uh, activities that the student or that you can actually design for the students within a, a PTG framework. And then uh, lastly, uh, an assessment form or an assessment component in PTG, which is the, the, the final 20, which can be anything like quiz in the spectrum, it can also be any assignment module that you use in Spectrum. Then in SA, anything that becomes, uh, that forms the final marks for the students, uh, part of the final mark uh, of the, for the students. And it can also be activities that uh, become a scaffolding, uh, uh, an assessment that becomes a scaffold for the completion of a larger assessment that the students do. Okay, so those are the three different components of uh, PTG that we are going to uh, start to develop moving forward uh, from now on. Okay, so before I move on into the next part, which is the simulation of how uh, the how we how we are going to operate PTG. I open the session for uh, any questions that you might have. For the Senate, saya um uh Dr. Tadi Bai daripada Dental. Boleh dengar tak saya? Boleh, boleh. Ah, boleh, boleh. Okay. Ah, boleh. Okay. All right. Um okay, this is blended learning kan? Mm -hmm. Okay, so saya um, just want to ask about the blended learning ni. Uh, is it doesn't matter face to face learning dulu and then supplement with online ataupun online dulu and then face to face? Because uh, I think I had uh, an experience lah. I mean like uh, giving a, um, this uh, apa tu, uh, blended learning ni to, to my student. Uh, but uh, yang kita buat is online dulu so um, online dulu then face to face but is it is it matters or not face to face dulu online dulu at, ataupun dia dia tak kisah tak kisah ke ataupun dia must be uh. dia tak kisah sebenarnya so what we are uh, trying to convey the message uh, in this uh, PTG actually the topic that you run or the mm -hmm. uh, PTG is, it can be standalone. That means the learning that the students do is totally done online. 
for a single topic. So you don't have an online plus. You don't have to have an online plus a face to face component either before or after. So this this um pembelajar pembelajaran ke arun gantian ni is totally online lah. Basically, yes, tot- yes, totally online for a sing- for a certain topic. So out of the forty oh. weeks yang you ada kan. Misal kata minggu ke empat dengan minggu ke lima, the topic is covered online. Maknanya dia termasuk dia punya kerja khusus, termasuk dia punya activity, termasuk dia punya resources. It's standalone. It can it can be standalone. So that's that's one way of doing it. You can also inject a face-to-face component within that if you want. Either you can do it before or after. Uh, kan? Untuk kadang-kadang macam uh, mungkin uh, pasal mula-mula ni kita tak berapa we're not really comfortable uh, letting the students go to study for themselves uh, in a single topic. So you can actually inject uh, face-to-face component in between to make sure that you you are comfortable that you know that they are learning. Do you get me or not? Uh, but actually yeah. eventually what we want is actually uh, for the uh, topic or for the component within the 14 weeks is that totally online by the students independently and you can actually check uh, their comprehension during either by the assessment or at the end uh, of the semester exam. Mm. Just to look to her. Okay, thank Hopefully you. Hopefully, that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I think this is uh, part of the good crucial to be conducted totally online, basically. Yeah? Yes. Uh, okay. Part uh, okay. Of, part of. So it depends on okay. uh, how the curriculum or how the program design the the online component for the students. Okay. All right. Thank you. Alright. Ask me more question, please. Uh, Doctor Zahir, Doctor Zahir, yeah? uh, can yeah. you go to slide number ten, Lilon? Yeah. Can you go to slide number ten? Uh-huh. Uh, ini berikutan uh, what has been asked just now. I have a question uh-huh. now. Now, if you look at that, you get the 40, 40, 20 penilaian, but you also say that the penilaian can be part of the actual the assignment, not within here, but the like the bigger assignment that we give. Yeah. So if this if this is the case 40 40 20 20 ni akan like tak ada kan is that allowed tak ada lah pula tak ada uh what well, <laughs> we just have to yeah, indicate yeah. that it will be part of the bigger assignment is it yes it can be part of the bigger assignment it can be uh, uh it, it, it is actually standalone okay dia tak mesti jadi part of the bigger assignment we design it as as a, a cost a total cost that means uh, if you want, the, for, for example, the quiz to help the students to understand their, uh, their bigger assignment, then so be it. But at the same time, you can design a quiz that will uh, form part of the final mark for the students. So it's up to your design. Um, my question is, um, maybe, okay, maybe I, I, I didn't make it clear just now. Okay. So he, my question is like, whatever it is, for this PTG, must show the penilaian, is it? Yeah, it should have penilaian. So, because it's going to be a standalone component mm. anyway, isn't it? So, kata dalam minggu ke tujuh, you are going to do PTG. Mm. You, to make sure that you know that the students are learning, you need to you need to assess them somehow, isn't it? Otherwise, you would not know whether they are learning or not. So, so say for it. Yeah, maybe I give you an example. So say like, okay, I do an activity. Say this is research methodology case, like, Let's say, yeah. So they you know they do the we do the bahan, we do the activity, and then for penilaian, we indicate that this will be shown by the student if they can do the let's say the lead review in the actual research proposal that they have to submit. Yes. Then it's okay, isn't it? Then yes. this will be this will be tested in the actual assignment in two B bagian two B uh, two bagian B or something like that. Is it? Yes, uh, I agree. It can be that, but at the same time, um, you need to be able to see the performance of the student some way. It doesn't have to be the full literature review. 
you can actually ask them to first compile the the references that is relevant to their work that will form part of the final research review so that you know they have done gone through uh, the resources you can also have done gone through the activity Is it? because at the end you get the uh, list of uh, references that students have so the list of references does not have to be marked uh, because you know that it's going to be marked uh, at the end of the um, course. Uh, okay, so but you we don't have to grade that part, is it? You don't have to, uh, but uh, you, okay. you let the students to demonstrate their learning. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. All right, good question, uh, just now. Yes, ask me more questions. We have 70 yeah. people. Uh, good morning, yeah. uh, Dr. Zairuddin. Yeah, I'm from uh, Faculty Languages of Langu Linguistic. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is, will we need to do the 40-40-20 starting from next semester? Or okay, so flexible? Yeah, okay. So the 40-40-20, the PTG, is designed uh, to be to form part of the curriculum so that's why we invite especially those programs who are going through their curriculum review okay and this is because we want the ptg because it's going to replace the lecture component it is actually designed as a program uh, uh yeah it's designed as part of the program as a whole so that means it's there in your SLP. And okay. it's there so we, in your so existing course, we not necessary to do it now. La. It's not necessary to do it now, but I would really recommend for you to actually to start. Okay. Uh, uh, incorporating a BPG in your courses now. Okay. Mm. And that will help a lot with finding the right resources the suitable resources where for when you will go through your curriculum review later on so you don't have to actually uh, search for it uh, too okay. much so so for, that means if we when we go to the curriculum review the ptg is a must to consider but now we can start to doing it to practice and to see that how suitable or something is it what you mean uh yes okay yeah, but thank you okay. even from Next semester, you can actually start to uh, replace your lectures uh, uh. with PTG components. So, uh, so that's why we started to give the uh, the, the roadshow now. I see, got it. No. Yeah. So the my second question is the talking about just now the guest lecturer. Yeah, uh, it's very um realistic. Is one to ask because some people I I did. I did have the interest to be asked the guest lecture, but there was the two problem is one to ask. One is, is it uh, any component mentioned how many hours if we have a guest lecturer? This is the first. And the second, if we invite a guest lecturer, will the person get some honorum or not? Yeah, because I'm Thanks. I'm in, in the conversation. That's why some people ask me. I need to know that. Thank you. Well, I'll, ask, I'll answer the second question first, okay? Um, the honorarium is actually, uh, uh, we, we return that back to the faculty, we return back to the, the program. If you want to give honorarium, uh, by all means, uh, give an, an honorarium. But if you don't have the resources to do the honorarium, well, uh, what, what, what you can do, what can you do, isn't it? But when, uh, I would say this, but when you design the, curriculum in such a way that there is a slot for guest lecturer, then the program should have the resources to uh, give honorarium to the guest lecturer because it's already in the curriculum, isn't it? So you need to be calculated as part of the the, the cost for the curriculum. Okay, so that's uh, the question number uh, two. Okay, question number one is about the um, the online lecture, isn't it? So the online lecture, um, because it is still real time, it is actually part of the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, with the students. Because um, the, there is 
the potential for interaction between the learner and also the educator, isn't it? So, uh, uh, what was the, the question again, Yusuf? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it that mentioned that at least how many hours for the okay. guest lecturer face to face? The, the question of how many hours is actually uh, we return back that back to you because um, mm. what you need to do is you need to fulfill 14 hours just now, isn't it? So the 14 mm. hours of uh, online lecture will actually replace one-to-one, um, -one, uh, ratio one-to-one -to, -one to the normal lecture. So that means uh, if the normal, the normal lecture in the classroom with the students face-to-face -face is two hours, then you will get the lecture from uh, UPM, for example, uh, your colleague who's an expert in the field to give two hours an online lecture uh, to the students face to face. Okay, so maybe if only two hours is all still okay, like, because we are thinking about like the elite, they, they have a requirement for at least four hours. That's why I want to ask for the guest lecturer, is it there is a minimum requirement for the hours? Okay, yeah. there's no minimum for the hours. But I would say uh, if you know that you are going to have at elite at UM lecturer to give uh, their lecture there, then you can actually embed this in your curriculum. So when you do your curriculum review, you know, so this topic or this session is going to be conducted by an elite lecturer. So it can be four hours straight. It can be two hours plus two hours next week or uh, two hours uh, on Tuesday and then two hours on Thursday. Mm, okay, so that's me is a flexible. Yes, it is quite flexible in terms of how you want to do it. But once you sort of lock it in into your curriculum structure, then you need to follow it. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Um, I see that is a question by somebody from, ah, yeah. Uh, is online lecture considered face-to-face -face? Yes, uh, so I, I think I answered that question just now. Uh, online lecture is considered face-to-face -face, uh, learning because it is, uh, yeah, it is uh, happening in real time, isn't it? So, and that's why I said just now, we would really recommend that when you do online lecture, you do it with people who, are, who can't be physically available at the university. Uh, if Dr. Wan um, remember just now what I said, if you, are in the, in, if you are in UM and the students are in UM, you might as well actually do the face-to-face the -face lecture in the class, okay? Or the learning session in the class. I actually normally, I don't give lectures anymore because I, I do uh, teaching uh, in class as a, a learning session. Um, there is somebody who raised their hand, Dr. Amira. Uh, thanks, Dr. Zahir. Um, I, have a, I have two questions actually. One is about the calculation. I was wondering if you could go back to the 40-40 formula century slide. 40-40 century slide. Um, uh, this the one. one with the, uh, the calc uh, second, the next one, I think. Uh, after that, are they young? Uh, yes, this uh, one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I just want to check whether I understand this correctly. So uh, the example here is Chonso, Kursus Speaker Credit, Dengan Seratus Dukro Jam SLP, CPG Tiga Puluh Peratus, so Tiga Puluh Enam Jam. So the PPG Tiga Puluh Peratus, is that uh, the percentage that we can decide at the course or program level, whether we want it to be, say, 30% or we want it to be 40% or we want the PPB to be 79%. Is that the 30% that you're talking about? Yes, that's the uh, percentage that we talk about. Uh, there is a, a two part of, to that question, uh, which I'm going to go, go uh, over in uh, the next few slides, because there are different ways for you to operationalize this, uh, this PTG. Okay, I, I will answer that uh, later. Is that okay? Okay, all right. Thanks. Okay. Okay, we have more questions in the chat. Um, okay, normal blended learning and this PTG. Okay, so um, 
to Dr. Noharyanti. So what we meant by the difference between the PTG and also PTS is um, the way that it's done. Okay, so that means uh, our old way of doing uh, or the normal way of doing it, uh, blended learning is we are actually doing it as a supplementary. So the old way of doing blended learning is supplementary. That means we still meet the, the students for 14 weeks. Every week, uh, week in and week out, we still meet with the students for 14 weeks. So when we move into PTG, we can actually uh, replace our lecture session or our class session with a PTG that uh, the students go through as self-directed learning. So that's the, the main difference uh, of the PTG. And this has the advantage of actually, I would say, releasing our time as lecturers to focus on maybe other work that we need to do. Uh, maybe uh, do uh, you can allocate more time for you to complete your research, for example, because you have actually designed the component for the uh, one or two weeks to be done by the students as a standalone. And when I say it's the, the done by the students as a standalone, it needs to complete three different things. One is the resources, one is the, and then it's the activity, and then there is an assessment, like uh, I uh, explain to Dr. Lee Duan just now. So that means you, after, sorry, the students after they completed the component for PTG for, for example, week three, the students have gone through the resources, the, the students have done the activity and they have been assessed um, on the activity and they know, they get the feedback of uh, what that has been assessed to them. So, all right. Okay, so um, more questions? Or is it okay if I continue with the uh, next part of the talk? Okay, so um, uh, let's move on. So the, the next part of this uh, briefing is uh, I'm going to simulate a few things um, for the uh, course delivery uh, that we have uh, decided uh, that we have designed for PTG just now. Okay, so let's look at uh, the first simulation uh, where we have a course. Uh, so this is uh, like a made up course, um, BIM 1001. Kaedah penyelidikan, research methods, three credits. Okay. Uh, and uh, from the design that we want the blended learning to be done uh, between 30 to 79, sorry, uh, I made a mistake. Yeah. 30, 30 to 79 percent of, of, of your SMP. So it's between 36 and 96 uh, hours of SMP is done online. And this course, choose to do its PTG by uh, 30%, okay? So as part of that calculation, you would find that the, learn, the online learning component of the course, of the whole course of 14 weeks, actually 36 hours, okay? And then the conventional teaching, the, the normal face-to-face, -face, things like labs, things like uh, assessment or the lecture or the tutorial will form, still form a major part of the learning, which is 84 uh, hours. So, uh, and it makes up the 120, 20, 20 hours for the three credit course. Okay, so let's focus or drill down to what is that for the 36 hours of PTG that we designed just now. So we know that uh, the percentage is 40, 40, 20. Okay. Um, you can actually change that to um, different. You can actually differentiate the, the resources activity to different percentage. But uh, for this exercise and for the start of our 
I would say PTG journey as a university, I would suggest that we first stick to 40, 40, 20 because that would uh, make it easier for people to understand and also develop their uh, PTG uh, components. Okay, so 40, 40, 20. So uh, from calculation, we know just now um, the hours for learning resources is 40. Okay, and then you have the hours for uh, learning activities uh, is 40. And then you have the assessment uh, eight hours. Okay, and we design that into the different weeks that, that we have here. And also we design what are the activities that will form part of the 14 hours here. Okay, so that means uh, if you add all this, you will get 14 hours, isn't it? So similarly, when you add all this, you are going to get 14 hours. So it can be things like uh, Web 2.0, uh, lectures of, um, uh, videos of lectures, maybe from, uh, this is a recorded uh, video lecture, Okay, uh, you can also go through online courses, a complete course like this, MOOC and Micro uh, for resources. Uh, and also, you can have the Tugasan uh, or assignment that they need to do in eight hours. So that's, uh, and you divide it into two weeks, uh, week five and week six. So those are the kinds of planning for our PTG, okay? It's quite, uh, it's quite straightforward there, okay? But let's look at what is the impact on our SLT, okay? Because remember, the SLT needs to be registered as part of the curriculum review process later on, okay? Uh, first thing that you would see is, you would notice that the calculation for the hours include the student learning time. Oops, oh, sorry. Okay. You will see that it actually includes uh, student learning time. And this is because, uh, sorry, student preparation time. So this is because when you are calculating the uh, self-directed learning component, you need to make sure that uh, the whole thing is done individually by the students. So that means, uh, you have the learning component, okay, the guided or non-guided, and uh, also the uh, student preparation time is calculated with that. So that forms part of the uh, the whole of the uh, student's um, time allocated for that online component because they are doing the the learning and also they have to prepare for the learning themselves. Okay, so that's it. So you will see here uh, you have um face to face and I deliberately look uh, put this as pencara jemputan daripada universiti luar negeri so that we differentiate that from um us sitting in our office in UM and then giving lectures. Uh, online using teams to students who are in their campuses or in the, in their colleges. So, uh, if we if we are in UM and the students are in UM, we might as well actually meet with them face to face. So, there is a place and time where you do the uh, online lectures. Okay. So, of course, when you do uh, the uh, PTG, you would find that it is actually more uh, focused towards the non-face-to-face -face component of yeah, teaching and learning. So you can see that uh, uh, this is the resources, these are the activities, and you have this as the uh, assignments or the assessment. Okay, so let's look at another uh, simulation. So again, uh, this is a different course, um, BIM 1004, Operasi and Penyelenggaraan, for credits, 160 hours SMT. So, we know uh, 
from calculating the SLT uh, need to be in the range of 30 to 79. So this is 79. Uh, so it's between 48 and uh, 128 hours. Okay. And this cost have a larger PTG component, which is 60%. So again, when we calculate the differentiation between the hours, you will find that here you have more hours for online learning compared to the conventional learning. So again, we design the planning for our 96 hours of PTG. So we have 40, which is 38 hours, another 40, which is 38 hours, and then uh, the assessment is 20 hours. So you automatically you find that there are more weeks here, isn't it? If you compare that to our um, earlier uh, smaller PTG percentage, you have less week. So here you have more weeks that you do your PTG. So you have less, you have less time that you have to do face-to-face -face, uh, lecture or face-to-face -face sessions with the students. Uh, the majority of their learning is actually done as self-directed learning for the students. And the reason why we do this is we want to uh, produce a lifelong learners actually because when you design the PTG well, uh, it when it consists the resources, consists activities, com consists assessment, the students are very self-aware that they they are responsible for their own learning. So that's why uh, I argue that when you do PTG you are actually designing the course or designing your program to produce lifelong learners. And it needs to be done uh, really, really thoughtfully for, for, you, for you to be able to achieve that and for the students to understand that that is the intention of the curriculum for them. Okay. So again, so this is uh, just the same thing. You'll find that there you have um, the, uh, the activities, you have the uh, activity pembelajaran here. So uh, now you have uh, quite a number of different ideas for, do, for you to do the uh, learning. So pembincangan dalam talian, it's done uh, by the students themselves as uh, non-directed. But you need to uh, make sure that they show the output so that uh, you know the learning happens in the uh, online discussion between the, the students themselves. Okay. Interactive content in H5P. So in Spectrum, we have H5P. There are a lot of interactive content that you do, you can do. There are also third party or different platforms that do interactive content. Uh, I will um, share with you a few that I know uh, later on. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, you have the pentaksiran um, or assessments that the students uh, need to do. Okay. So again, we go into our SLP. Uh, you will find so these are all the um, the things that we have here. Okay, uh, and these are uh, how we sort of um, group them. So this is the activities. Those are the lectures or uh, learning sessions, and these are the assessment. And when you calculate everything, you get. Uh, 160 uh, hours for all the total SLT. Okay, so that is how SLT is designed to reflect PTG component. Okay, so let's move on to um, uh, I'll, I'll go through until the um, uh, the operations and then we will look at how uh, and then we will be answering Dr. Amira's question. Okay, uh, so before we do that, uh, is there any question on the calculation of SLT? Or are you, uh, are you comfortable if I continue? Okay, yeah, we have one 
Dr. Siti Nomaya. Assalamualaikum. Uh, good morning. Um, morning. My question is that um, how does this reflect on our um, MQF form? I mean, like, do we have now to distinguish between which one is a blended, which one is not? And then are there, is it going to be a new form that is going to be a total up of how many percentage that we have uh, for each of that one? Uh, that is question number one. Question number two is that so far what I've seen is that the examples that we have given, um, the assessment is at the assessment where it's going to be marked. Lah, kan? Sebab tadi you did mention that the assessment, the 20% of the assessment or uh, uh, it's not necessarily marked. So how do we reflect that in our documentation? Thank you. Okay. All right. So number one is the question about the MKF forms. Okay. So um, we have our um, a representative from uh, QMAC, hopefully, uh, here. Prof. Prof. Yeah, yeah. I'm here, uh, uh, Dr. Zahir. Okay. So do you want to take that question? Uh, the MQF form, we still follow the existing and current, uh, even for the new, I think the coming semester, all the PTJ will follow the IPEX system, can? So the IPEX where we have the SLT. So uh, answering to Dr. Maya's uh, question, uh, there is no changes on the MQF. We, it, this is example that Dr. Zahir shows you can differentiate uh, in colors or you can just put some label this is blended this is online uh, i mean the uh, the conventional way this is the blended uh, the ptg part so uh, currently no because we are in the process of um, moving to ipex right so uh, okay yeah, uh, I mean, like, uh, it's up to the, I mean, now it depends on the PTJ to define, lah, kan? Yep, uh, yep. Which one is blended and not, and uh, wouldn't it be difficult for the QMI and for the other, other, um, like, ESPC, for example, to to really look at that, uh, okay, mana blended, do we have to uh, bite to that? Ke macam mana? You can see that the non-face-to-face -face and the documentation that you prepare, uh, either for the curriculum review, the way you design, the discussion should be there and that should reflect the MQF for the, um, you know, like the coming semester. Uh, I think um, we, from from this SLT, uh, the face-to-face -face, uh, is considered conventional. If you have the online face-to-face, -face, that could also fall under um conventional but it's only the medium is different but for ptg uh, as dr zahi mentioned the bahan the the, the materials uh, recorded um uh, lecture that is considered ptg at, at the qmac level we we can understand that for the documentation the the slt part I mean, like because like if you look at the blended punya uh, definition uh, just now it's like it's a hybrid method right um, a physical and then it's online so if you look at online kalau even though it's uh, face to face then it can still be online that if we do not count that as blended then it's uh, it goes against with the definition ulang uh, balik doctor yep um, kalau macam tengok apa, my understandings of blended is that the hybrid of uh, online and physical, right? Uh, online and physical punya deliveries or um, uh, learning punya activities lah. So if you look into that online, um, even face to face um, can also be online. I I I mean like when it's um. On real time, I would consider this as face to face, or do you not consider that as face to face when it's real time? Ah, so yes, yes, that kita, is face to face uh, is real time, is yeah. Ah, 
Bila kita Dan kita, kalau dia real time kalau macam ni sekarang you guys are uh, delivering this in Malaysia then I'm now in Poland for my research leave so this is considered a uh, blended Yeah because of the circumstances Okay macam So yeah. maknanya the face to face tu still still yeah, boleh yeah. diterima pakai lah Ah betul but it has that that caveat isn't it ha, maknanya you invite Alexa from outside or you are not physically in UN. So, and that is uh, I would say it is going to be quite few in between so you will not have that component that much but it will it can still uh, sort of qualify as um, uh, a blended or an online component Okay, lepas tu soalan dua oh, pasal assessment eh. Uh, tadi dah jawab soalan tadi tu. Ah, ya, ya dah. Thank you. Okay, uh, untuk uh, tentang assessment. Tapi kan tadi macam assessment yang uh, formative assessment yang uh, tak memberi markah. Jadi sebenarnya uh, apa dalam uh, kotak penilaian ni, so the, 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 the assessment box, you can actually put in a component of assessment without the Uh, pemberatan. So, so that means you have the the assessment that you design in your course but it does not come with uh, the weightage so you can actually put in uh, the, the hours that the students will need to do uh, at the end. So it, uh, you can use the existing form but you just uh, remove the uh, the, compo- the the weightage percentage. And then you 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 declare it in your SAT saying so this is uh, uh, an assessment work. Uh, it 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 counts towards the SAT, but it does not come with the uh, weightage for the student. Okay. Boleh. Boleh. Okay. Thank you. Um. Okay. Um. Any more question or shall we continue? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is uh, what we are selling to our our lecturers and our our, our students. So when we do a PDG, uh, what happens is that you don't have to face the student every week anymore because we substitute our lecture with a with an online uh, learning uh, design that is being done by the students self directed so that means it's uh, self contained with uh, the bahan or the resources and then the activities and the assessment all in that together There's, and again just now the assessment can be part of a mark assessment or it can be a formative assessment that the students go through to test their understanding the number one and for you to know that they have gone through and also they have understood the point of the assessment and they have achieved the learning outcome for that topic okay so um, it allows you to um, design a self-contained uh, sort of nugget of uh, knowledge that the students can consume and assess themselves by themselves and you you get the um, measurement from that that means because when they did the activities they did this the, the formative assessment then you know so this uh, the students have got the uh, the uh, the learning from that So let's say, for example, they don't um, achieve so um, the required um, uh, required assessment measurement that you wanted from the your, your learning design. That means you need to um, have a conversation with them or uh, go back to your learning design, your activities and your resources to see where the students are having problems. And you can actually know where the problem is by looking at where the students um, didn't get it 
when when you do the assessment, um, the, the formative assessment. Let's say, for example, in learn week uh, number five, you have three learning outcomes. And your assessment for the resources and activities for the, the week five covers those three learning outcomes. And you will find that the students are, uh, uh, are very good at number learning outcome number one and number two for that week. But they are struggling at learning outcome number three. So now you can actually go back to your resources and your activities. You can even have a, a conversation with the students to see why don't they... Uh, why are they struggling with learning outcome number three for week number five? Okay, so 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 it allows you to actually design the curriculum that the students are comfortable to go through the materials, and uh, you know that you can measure the outcomes within that, and it gives I would say confidence to you as a lecturer when you can actually move them to the next. Um, uh, the next topic. So that's the, the beauty, I would say, of doing PTG. Okay, uh, so that's number one. And uh, number two, it uh, it allows or it actually facilitate for the upcoming ODL and uh, RL because the components of PTG is self-directed. The students are doing it themselves. And that is the I would say the, the the goal of doing ODL as well because when you do ODL, the theme that you or the, the self instructional material that you design for the ODL students would actually need to achieve that that kind of resources, activities, and assessment that uh, you have designed for. So that means when your program decide to do ODL, you can actually just Take whatever that you've done uh, in your spectrum, and you describe it as a PT, uh, as a sim for that topic. So, and the difference between uh, PTG and ODL is that uh, you are kept between the thirty to eighty percent of the um, the learning. When you do ODL, you need to go over that um, sixty, isn't it, or uh, eighty? So that means whatever that you have done for the ODF, probably 30%, then you just add a few more percentage so that, um, so that then you uh, complete or fulfill the requirements for ODF. So that's um, uh, number two. And number three, uh, you are actually giving a consistent uh, delivery for the whole of the curriculum um, uh, delivery. Let's say your curriculum cycle is uh, three years. So that means because you have designed the PTG element for certain weeks, it's there and you don't have to change that anymore because it, uh, the students will get the same thing. You are giving the same things. Uh, I would uh, attach to that because sometimes when I do, before this, when I do my lectures, every semester, uh, there will be different things that I missed out and different things that I add in that your previous student didn't get your uh, or the the current student did get from the previous uh, from the previous cohort uh, sorry from the pre previous semesters because there is no consistency although I'm using the same slides there are elements that I may, I may be talk about I may talk about it during this semester, but last semester I didn't talk about it. Uh, talk about it, or I talked about it last last semester, but I didn't talk about it this semester. So there is no there is um, uh, no consistency. But when you do PTG, because everything is self-contained, you have prepared everything with the uh, resources, with the activities, with the assessment. The students get the same thing, um, and it will actually help with the PO achievement. Uh, recording of the PO achievement later on when you do your uh, curriculum review. Okay, so that's uh, for us and also for the program. For the students, of course, because everything is self-contained, it actually gives flexibility for them in uh, learning because we know not all students have the same uh, ability to understand. 
some are slower, some are faster, some are more advanced, some are struggling. So when you design the learning materials in such a way that they can go at it at their own pace, then it actually helps them to learn uh, as what or as how they are comfortable learning. And because everything is there online, they can actually redo the activities, they can redo the assessments, especially the, the formative assessment, then it will actually help the student to understand better. They can actually go back. Macam like, tengok video, right? you can uh, rewind. Yeah, you, you watch movies, you can easily rewind to um, where the, the, the plot is not that easy to understand. So that then you can um, uh, understand the, the, the next part of the, the learning. So that, and that is important for the students. Because otherwise, we go, uh, so the normal way that we teach, uh, we every week we give different topics, isn't it? We don't know whether the students understood our previous topic uh, unless we test them, okay? But we have to actually follow the uh, syllabus and complete the, uh, the, uh, the syllabus or the curriculum. Uh, and kalau dia tak ada, dia, kalau dia tak, kalau student tak proaktif, kan? They will not have the uh, ability to actually uh, go back to us and then ask us, okay? But with this, PTG, you have the, the, the flexibility for the students and they can still actually then maybe message us to say, okay, so I, I didn't uh, quite understand uh, the, the resources that you give. Right. And so then you can actually help them with that. So you become a facilitator of learning instead of uh, uh, the delivery component of, of, of learning for the students. Uh, I, I think I saw Dr. Siti Haja. Okay. Okay, there are a few uh, uh, questions here. Uh, in the sample, so the first one from Dr. Amira, uh, in the sample calculation, uh, do the red color present, yes, okay, so the question to Dr. Uh, from Dr. Amira, is the red color representing, representing PTG and then black color, black color represent the non-PTG, yes, that, that's correct, so that's how I, I designed that, that so okay, it's, it's more um, visual, isn't it, for, for you guys to, to know, so which are the PTG part, which is the non-PTG part, and I actually add, uh, a, uh, a calculation at the bottom there. So I just add one more uh, line uh, or row. Blended learning ratio, how many uh, for uh, this. Um, okay. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Nora Shikin, uh, can I just confirm that the allow uh, 70 to 39? Yes, exactly. 70 to uh, 39. Um, are there any criteria for which module is allowed to have a higher PTG component? So there's no set criteria. It depends on uh, the availability of resources. So that means if you have a lot of available resources that allows for the, the learning to happen and the measurement of the learning to happen, then you can have a higher PTG component for that course. Okay. And then uh, Dr. Siti Hajar's question, um, and only add it to develop team, how about PTG? Okay, so um, so in ODL, uh, you need to develop the SIM, uh, and the way that we develop SIM in UM is actually everything is developed in our spectrum or in our LMS. So uh, PTG is the is the same. The only difference is the percentage of the resources that we uh, develop. So in in a way. Our PTG element that consists of the learning, the resources, uh, and the activities and assessment is actually that is the scene itself. But it's the scene that the scene is done in a digital format. Okay. Uh, in ODL, sometimes there are a printed version of ODL, and I would say I would uh, argue that the printed scene in uh, all the all the forms of uh, ODL program is because there is uh, not uh, available enough technology to, to do 
a digital SIM back then. Okay, in the 80s, the 90s, of course, you need to easily print the, the module for SIM uh, because people don't have that. But the, the modern SIM in ODL, uh, because we have already have quite a, a, bunch, a, a large area, a vast area of places where you have internet and you can actually design the SIM digitally, then you, you design that. Uh, digitally, everything will be assessed by the uh, LMS. And module or criteria that needs to default, I think there is no set uh, uh, module or criteria you need to follow. The only thing that you need to have is the principle, which is any topic or any component uh, of the curriculum that you want to deliver as DTG need to conform to the 4040. 20. That's it. Okay, um, and we have uh, another follow up question um, by Dr. Denis Pariza. When is the implementation? Okay, so that's why we invite you to uh, this uh, session uh, today. Uh, that means when you are doing your curriculum review, so uh, EDEC and uh, ASPC, and also that is uh, put down. Um, ASD, to see that we've got no one more And also QMAC have already, uh, have already agreed, and this has also been um, uh, endorsed by the Senate through the JPPID and JPPID. That means when you do your curriculum review, you need to put in the PTG element in the curriculum review. So that's why all the, the coordinators for curriculum review uh, is in this session, okay? Um, so if you are not doing your curriculum review, you, you still can do uh, PTG, uh, but that uh, will uh, be uh, on a cost basis. So it, it's it's not being it's not going to be reflected in your curriculum structure. It's not in your uh, apa kan borang borang banyak banyak tu kan? Uh, apa borang Empat lima enam tujuh eh, sudah. Ayolah tiga empat lima enam. Borang-borang tu, uh, it will not be there. So that means um, you are doing it as uh, as a, as a cost basis. Doctor Zahir. Yeah, ah, can I add uh, um, your answer to siapa tu, Doctor Nis Fariza? Regarding the curriculum review uh, about the change of mode of teaching for the next semester, um, if if your program um, for conventional, uh, if your program is conventional, uh, you don't need to change the mode of teaching at the Senate level or whatsoever. Uh, according to MQA advisory note, if the program is conventional and you going through a curriculum review, still want to fix, a, a, I mean, you want to keep the conventional program, not change to ODL, you can, you know, design uh, the PTG as part of it. Lah. You, you, you don't need to like going to Senate to, to make a changes on PTG or, you know, uh, they did not go to PT, uh, the Senate level. It's just at the faculty level, the curriculum review, uh, cur curriculum at the faculty only when you change the Borang 3, SLT, Borang 4 and so on. I think that that's to make make it clear that the sampai ke, um, you know, the Senate level. And another one, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, Dr. Zahir, uh, regarding the question from Madam Nor Ashikin, um to the, the the range of ptg between 30 to 79 percent if uh the the module uh, the faculty want to have more than uh 30 percent if they have a flexibility determine percentage for ptg for the course yeah if one cost 30 percent another cost is 50 percent but the whole program should not exceed 60 percent of ptg is that correct? Betul eh? Uh, is it one remote learning program? Um, okay, yes, Prof, yes, we have one uh, RL program. Alam sekitar, Prof. 
So um, we actually, I actually do hybrid. One is physical, fully physical. One is online. So the student is somewhere else. We have two classes running at the same time. One for conventional and one for um, hybrid. I mean uh, RL for yeah. the same program. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But mm. kalau if the program, uh, looking at the M2A, the program mm -hmm. is designed uh, or registered in MQR as a conventional, mm -hmm. start, uh, started 2000, uh, 2023, kita kena follow. Kita punya uh, the one that we we registered with MQA. Mm -hmm. I think the RL program uh, most probably soon will be changed to ODL. You have to go back to the, the conventional part. Tapi yang ini is decision made by the TNCA lah, the RL one, yeah? Right, thanks. <coughs> can, I, can I just ask uh, Prof Rafida? Yes, Prof Zul. Yeah, you, you mentioned there is something, because you said something, I, I just nak, nak, nak minta you, you re, rephrase or, or uh, what you said about it, that one course can change 30, the other can change 50, but the whole program the whole course should not change 60. Can can you run by me that again? Yes. Ada tak you, you yeah, tadi yeah, kan? yeah. This is the conventional program. Um, right. For PTG, if uh -huh. uh, the whole program, if the whole program, uh, any courses, you can pick any courses who want to uh, have the PTG, but in total cannot exceed 60%. In total. The that means program. cannot exceed sixty percent of the total number of courses. Yeah. Or, okay. the, the which course yang implement PTG cannot exceed sixty percent. For example, the, the whole program, the whole program, uh, how many courses do you have? Yeah. Okay. So then, let's say hundred courses. That means yeah. I can yeah. only I cannot change more than sixty courses. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Tapi within the courses, I can have an option. Yes. I can either change 30% or up to 79%. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So? Betul. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Boleh. Okay. Uh, Tadi lah. Yes. Tadi lah. Um, you take your thumb here. Um, so if you want to say something or to the kind word, to the Tamira. Okay, tak penalty. Kalau dia datang balik, then yeah. Okay, so I'll let you continue. Okay, so let's look at how we operationalize uh, PTG. Okay, so um, uh, when we are uh, designing our PTG in our curriculum review or in our next semester in yeah, uh, teaching. So uh, the, the best practice is to use the PTG or to design PTG as a self-directed learning concept. That means uh, the content that we give to the students is a self-contained but it consists of the, the three different items just now, resource, activities and assessment, that means that you don't have to interfere in real time. That means the students are going through the, the learning process themselves at their own pace. So the examples for uh, activities that you can do in spectrum, things like um, H5P, things like lessons, in the forum, so those are the time, the kind of the kind of modules that we have in the spectrum that allows for that to happen. In Web 2.0, things like uh, Edpuzzle, Blend Space, uh, Socrative, they, they have different uh, modes of learning and you know, different kind of activities that allows for uh, self-directed self learning that to happen. And you can also use uh, an online course that is designed by either like academics in UM or designed by yourself. That means you have designed MOOC or micro credential with edX. So you can use that to replace certain weeks, for example, in, in your classes. So that means, for example, I have uh, my, my pathology, a building pathology course. Um, it consists of three weeks learning in, um, in future learning. So I can 
uh, embed that in my course uh, when I teach pathology on 14 weeks. So three weeks, students are doing it uh, online on uh, on the micro credential on, on Switzerland. And uh, that becomes the complete learning for uh, the, the students. So uh, at the program level, uh, what we want is actually the PTG is designed as part of the curriculum that you review. So uh, actively you put in the PTG component when you are designing the curriculum because it's a replacement of the uh, credit hours that you meet with the student face to face. Okay, and uh, as I said before, it is a, a consistency of learning that we want that we are after throughout the curriculum cycle that we have. Okay, so there are two ways for you to do uh, PTG. The first one is um, by PTG as um, uh, as a productive. Um, so that means every course allows the same uh, amount of uh, PTG. Okay, or you can have uh, the second one, which is PTG in uh, selectively. So that means uh, the course. Uh, design its own PTG percentage, but you cannot exceed the 60% just now from uh, the planning. So you can actually have this conversation within the curriculum uh, review team at your course. Sometimes you might see that there are courses that you can use uh, different uh, PTG. But at the very minimum, you need to have at least 30% for uh, your uh, course. And we, uh, we are uh, quite flexible in how you want to, to choose this, whether you want to have uh, uh, option A or option B. And this is based on your curriculum design, based on the resources available for uh, doing your um, uh, uh, for doing your uh, curriculum review. Uh, sometimes uh, in uh, uh, areas like um, uh, sciences, there are a lot of uh, different uh, simulation and virtual reality that you can use. Then you can see up the uh, amount of PTG that you do for your uh, course. So, uh, so these are the um, development or the uh, I don't remember the English word uh, for uh, uh, PTG in UM. So uh, DSP is the, the body that actually uh, designed the policy, make sure that uh, the university achieve the required uh, minimum uh, that use blended learning by 2025 according to PPPT and PT. Okay, uh, QMAC is the one that uh, go through the curriculum review, and we and all these three uh, and these two will be uh, these two centers will be uh, the one checking and the one to make sure that everybody is follows the, follows this policy. What EDEC does is um, uh, preparing our lecturers and preparing our programs to uh, enable them to achieve. Uh, the uh, PTG, the, the requirement, and also uh, giving training so that then you can actually design a good PTG for uh, all your courses and also your academic program. Um, uh, and other uh, resort, other places is actually PTM because the PTM is the one that um, works with EDEC to uh, do the uh, technical bits to make sure that uh, you can report this properly to uh, KPT. Okay, uh, for the deans and for the academic staff, uh, the deans are there to make sure that you uh, you know that your programs or your curriculums go through the right um, process and um, follows the requirements for PTG. Academic staff, uh, it's now is the time for you, for you, for you to look at the 
components of the course and make sure that you are able to embed elements of PTG, especially when you are doing your curriculum review. Okay, so yeah, I think uh, that's all uh, for uh, the session uh, of today. So again, uh, I thank you for coming here uh, and interacting with me uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Hapida uh, from UMA. Uh, there's supposed to be people from the ASPC, but uh, they uh, sent out them our regards. Uh, they can't be here. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, with the session, uh, we can actually start to think about embedding PTG elements in your course. We will give the uh, the slides to you uh, later on. Um, and uh, if you have any more questions, you can um, uh, just ask us uh, right now before we end um, uh, the session. So uh, I will allow about uh, a few more questions before we, we end. Yes, uh, Prof. Zul. Uh, Pro, Dr. Zahir, just, just your last slide, the, the, the previous one that you mentioned. I, I just, I'm just curious, yang pilihan B itu, Oh, okay. Um, how did you get this uh, forty-eight percent um, overall? Only, but uh, so you, uh, you kira yang apa uh, based on credit? Oh, so mean mean sorry, mean, meaning meaning, kalau thirty percent of the th three credits ni is like one credit macam tu. Ah, uh, sebab titik ini kan kita kira jam credit kan? Right, right. So, so money you have to calculate as such, and then from there, that then you get the forty-eight percent, Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Dr. Amira, do you have a question? Okay, yeah. I'm just trying to check. Can we get some? Um, yeah. Okay, so I say you get this. So, okay, so um, uh, okay, so I'm going to put Dr. Amira. Ah, okay, so yes, um, when you have courses, um, in actually when we do um, uh, blended learning for seminar, uh, when you look at courses, uh, because sometimes uh, there are faculties who try to achieve hundred uh, percent uh, blended learning, which we don't recommend. So, uh, we do we know for sure that there are courses which uh, there's does not have to be done um, as uh, blended learning pun kan macam research method tak perlu pun sebenarnya apa um, uh, apa namanya khusus macam uh, latihan industri as, of course you're not doing it as uh, blended learning so uh, that's why we don't want the the faculties to aim for 100 percent blended learning because uh, it's not part of the target uh, by the ministry board and then uh, it's not appropriate. Tak semua khusus kita boleh apa uh, design sebagai uh, blended learning, especially the high the higher percentage. So uh, you need to make sure that you uh, design the PTG for courses where the students will gain the most benefit by going on higher percentage of PTG. That means the, the minimum of thirty is there, tapi Dari, kan? Uh, mana benefit yang lebih kepada students, then you can actually up that, that PTG. So, hopefully that, that answers your question, Dr. Mira. Okay, the next, uh, Dr. Nohi Daiwati, can we get an example? Of course, uh, we will um, we will share this um, slides, then you can actually that, uh, you can actually uh, look at it and try to embed, embed. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Puan Siti Nomaya daripada SPC ya. Uh, so still ya. Yeah. So uh, kalau ada kalau ada soalan uh, boleh tanya apa uh, SPC juga. Um, uh, Dr. Eng Yin Mei of forty eight percent. Ya, okay yang ni ya kita ni. So um, okay, dia dia punya calculation. Okay, calculation dia ialah uh, you kira uh, keseluruhan kredit. So kan kita ada kredit keseluruhan tu 46. 
So uh, when you do the when when you calculate your uh, PTG, uh, you based uh, so you per per credit. The hours is uh, per credit. So the total is per credit. So then you get that you get that forty eight percent. Yeah, hopefully that helps. Nah, tu ada doktor Fikir apa, probably dah ada uh, Buat dia punya uh, calculation Okay, hopefully uh, That helps uh, everyone uh, We will share the Resources uh, That we have uh, Shortly Okay um, I, I was talking just now Before we end, I was talking about um, Different resources that you can actually Bring in to uh, allow for uh, self-directed learning by uh, your uh, students. So, I for this are uh, for uh, sciences. Okay, so we have um, uh, resources for interactive simulations um, that you can uh, look at from. So this is from uh, Colorado University. So these are for uh, the sciences. You can actually look at the resources there. You can actually uh, and uh, for items or uh, simulations that you want to uh, get the students to learn independently. You can actually uh, embed or use this as part of the um, documentation in your PT. Uh, so, for example, in your SLT, when you when you are uh, doing uh, activity pembelajaran or even by pembelajaran, you can actually put in uh, uh, virtual uh, simulation using uh, PHGT uh, um, as part of the learning for the students that you can design, that you design for the students. Okay. Uh, another one is um, uh, Lab Exchange. So Lab Exchange is uh, by Harvard University. It's the same, it's similar to, uh, to uh, uh, FAT as well. So this is another one. You can actually uh, see uh, the result that uh, is in there uh, for you to design your uh, PTG. There are also uh, locally designed uh, resources. Uh, I'm, I was uh, in a program, uh, Erasmus program, that design a self-contained uh, learning resources. Uh, so, can actually share the link to that. Okay. So, this uh, was done by a group of um, of uh, resource uh, group of lecturers uh, with um, EU grants. Uh, Ecot dot uh, my uh, that was done by our University uh, uh, that um, done by UM, UPM, and Telus University, so that you can actually uh, use that, as, and you can actually embed that in the uh, learning materials or learning activities that you declare in your SLT forms. Okay, so if there is no more question, I uh, again I thank everyone. Uh, for uh, joining and please um, uh, remember to um, fill up the attendance and feedback form uh, before you leave. So any questions, if you have uh, any uh, more questions, you can uh, email us uh, at edec at um.edu.my. Uh, if you have my, uh, if you if I have my contact, uh, you want the, the slides earlier, I can um, uh, share you the link to the slides uh, so it's all available for you to um, uh, refer to okay okay so if there's no more uh, feedback uh, and questions uh, i think we can end the session uh, for today and i will hopefully see you again uh, in the future uh, uh, in other avenues for a discussion and i would like to highlight that uh, on um, 16, 
uh, will be on the sixth. Uh, so on the sixth later. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, tomorrow there will be a, a special session that we have a forum discussion on Chat GPT, uh, how it will impact our teaching and learning. So we have um, uh, panels. Thank <laughs> you.